Okay, so we've been right, we've been drawing a lot of influence lines, and we're going to use that. But now we also want to include that we now have a dead load and uh, a uniformly distributed dead load and a live load. And let's see how that works. Also, I want to turn the maximum negative moment that can be created at A and the positive shear at B. So let's say we'll go for the moment. Let's do the shear. Let's do the moment at A first. Why not? It's in, it's in the first order. So we'll do the moment at A. The moment at A is over here at this fixed connection. How am I going to find that? Can I do one free body diagram to find the moment at A as the uniform mo moves around? No, I've got three here and one there. So I'm going to have to break this thing up uh, right here about the hinge. So uh, I think we should do that. So I want to find the uh, moment at A as a function of this thing. So that's let's. A that's a cantilever at the A? No, that's a fixed connection. Fixed connection, hinge, roller. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come over here and I'm going to draw both segments of this structure. So there's my five meter segment. And on it, I'm going to have what I'm assuming to be the moment at A. And then at B, what am I going to have? My shear force. And I guess technically I would have another shear force at A. We're not going to do axial force. And then from B to C, that free body is 10 meters. And then I'll have the positive shear at B here. And then over here I'll have the uh, positive shear at C. So you can see all I need to do is figure out what's going on here and I can uh, solve for the moment at B. But I got two conditions to worry about, right? In one condition my unit load is traveling here from 0 to 5 and the other condition is over here. Which one do we want to do first? We'll do the one that the unit load is here at some distance x and at some distance 5 minus x from that break. Remember, my, my goal is to find the moment at A. So in this scenario, what do you think the shear at B is? Well, look at this free body diagram. Are there any loads applied? No, so the shear at B is 0. So I'll just say, well, it's zero. Since it's zero, it's not zero here, what do I need to find the moment at A? I just sum the moments of, that I have. So if I sum moments at A, what do I get? Well, I have the moment at A, which with right-hand rule sign convention is negative. And then I have the moment produced by my unit load, which is what? Also negative. And that'll be 1 times x. That's it. Remember, the shear at B is 0. So what's the moment at A? Negative x. Negative x. And that's good for, I, I forgot to write it in here, but this will be for the case from 0 to 5. Sorry. So the next case would be between 5 and 15. My free body diagrams look exactly the same. We haven't got there yet. We're drawing the influence line, right? The influence line is only a function of a unit load moving across the structure. So I've got my moment at A, my shear at A, my shear at B, shear at B, 
I'm just redrawing all the stuff we already assumed and the sheared sea. This was still 5 meters. This was still 10. Where's my unit load? It's over here somewhere. What's that? I don't know. You tell me. Is the shear at B still zero? Yes. <coughs> Look. No. So how do I find the shear at B? So in the moment's about where? Well, you don't know shear at C either. Sum the moments about sh about C. So if I sum the moments about C. What do I get? Well, right hand rule is my sign convention. This is going to create negative moments, so I'll have negative the shear at B times 10 meters. Oh, what's this distance right here? I need that distance. How much minus X? 15. 15. And that creates positive moment of 1 times 15 minus X. So I now can find the shear at B. What is the shear at B? It looks like it's going to be um, 15 minus x divided by 10. Why did you assume in the first part that VB was zero? But you I did not assume at the first part. What's, what's VB here? If I sum moments and see, what's VB? Huh? Well, there's no load. If there's no load, there's nothing. There's no forces, no moments, there's nothing. There's no load. No load means no reactions. Right? You see, anything? there's no loads here. Right. But now, there is a load there. But on the part you're covering, there is isn't. There is none. But when I pass that shear over here, I now have to, so when I sum moments at... A, make sure it's in equilibrium. What do I have? I've got the moment at A, which is what? Minus MA. And what else do I have? The shear at B. Creates negative moment. What's the shear at B? 15 minus X over 10. And what's its moment arm? 5. So what's the moment at A? I'll, I'll just let that cancel this, so it'll be 15 minus x divided by 2. So there's the moment at A from 0 to 5. There's the moment at A from 5 to 15. So let's plot it and see what we get. Wouldn't that be negative? It would be negative. Uh, what's the best? I'll, I'll do it this way. I'll just change. I'll just run the negative through it. So let's go back and plot this guy. So the moment at A and the X direction will be here and I'll be concerned about what's happening at B and C. So from 0 to 5 I plot this. When X is 0 I get 0. When X is 5 I get minus 5. Now I plot this guy at x equal 5. What do I get? Oh, something's wrong. Oops, what did I do wrong? Something's not happening. You didn't multiply 15 times 5. No, I just divided it. I took the 5 and knocked out the 10. Uh-oh, I screwed something up, didn't I? 5 minus 10 over 2. Up. No, that's right. 5 minus, five, I mean, 5 plus 5 is negative 10 over 2 is minus 5. Yeah, it's okay. I had, a, I had a Da Vinci moment with my algebra. And then I'll plug in x equal 15, and what do you get for x equal 15? Zero. So all that work, that's my, that's my moment at A, influence line for the moment at A.
know we went a little bit long, but let's see if we can finish this problem. So I've got a live load of 10 kilonewtons. Where should I put my live load of 10 kilonewtons? If I were to draw this beam again, and my live load is moving around, my 10 kilonewton live load, where should I put it to create the maximum negative moment at B, or at A? Right here. Yeah. So it'd be right here, over the pin. Where should I put my uh, dead load? Well, I don't have a put a dead load. I just have to add it on, right? So what's going to happen is my dead load runs the whole structure And then my single live load is here of 10 kilonewtons. Give me just a second to draw this in. And that has a value of uh, 1.5 kilonewtons per meter. So now I can actually figure out the value. So my moment at A max will be equal to 10 kilonewtons times minus 5 meters, this will have units of meters, plus this, which is 1.5 kilonewtons per meter, times the area of my triangle. What's the area of this triangle? 1 half base, which is 15 meters, times height, which is minus 5 meters. So what does that turn out to be? This is easy. This is minus 50. I don't know what that is. 1.5 divided by 2 times uh, 75. 35. What is it? What? Negative 56.25 plus 50. Plus another 50. So that's minus 106.25, and that would be kilonewton meter. So that's the maximum moment at A due to a dead load and a moving load. So if this load is in any other position, what happens? The ordinate value is smaller. So why did I pick this position? Because the graph tells me that's the maximum effect. The dead load is just extended right now over the whole structure. All right, thanks for going a little bit long.